Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I've got something very cool to show you today. This is the Sparrows Lock Picks Shimmy card. Um, this is actually something which I drew up the first design of, and then Sparrows took on and, and developed a bit themselves. There's a bit of a collaboration going on there. And uh, Sparrows Lock Picks did send me this for review. And it's worth mentioning that, of course, I've worked with Sparrows on multiple products, but I don't profit from any sales of any Sparrows products. So, um, yeah, and whilst when you help design something, it's hard to be entirely objective. Um, all views are going to be my own, so let's get going. So here is the shimmy card, and it is made of extremely thin material. It, it is actually packaged together with this protective little uh, piece of card, which has a little cutout on the corner. And when it comes in the bag, it even has some protective film over it, which if I was going to store this in my wallet, then I would actually keep the uh, protective film on it. Uh, and if I didn't have uh, any credit cards in there, I would probably keep the, the plastic in there too for a bit of rigidity. Um, anyway, so, oh yeah, and there is a warning on the back of this little plastic card which says, edges can be sharp when punched out. Like I said, this is surprisingly thin stuff. I'll get my calipers out for you and show you just how thin this can be. So turn these on and zero them. Uh, this is in millimeters, so it is about uh, 0.18 millimeters or uh, 0 0.007 inches or seven thousandths of an inch. So we're talking about very, very thin shim material here and surprisingly strong stuff. So what do we get? Well, we get some clues on here um, for what's going on. We've got some handcuff uh, shims, although this does have um, a really awesome uh, ulterior purpose. Uh, you've got some padlock shims here, which uh, are flat and do need a curve put on them. And then some uh, other pieces of shim material here, which we will uh, come on to. So how do you get these out? Well, like most of these uh, cards that you get, whether it's a, a lock pick card or rate card or survival card, whatever you are looking at, uh, once you unpick these, for the most part, you're not going to get them back together with a few exceptions. Um, but they do come off, as you'd expect, they're held on by these incredibly small little spigots. The, um, I don't know what cutting process is here, but whether it's laser jet or water jet or something else, um, the, it's, wow, it's such precision to, to uh, that, you know, these little spigots can be so, so tiny. Um, and they leave very little in the way of, um, I don't know what to call it, residue. But yeah, you can just take all these uh, tools off and they really do come out a lot easier than you would expect, genuinely. Um, and when you feel uh, the tools, you'll feel how sort of strong this steel material is. I don't know what the uh, grade of the steel is, but I can tell you that it's surprisingly <laughs> tough. Uh, it doesn't, considering it's like seven thousandths of an inch or uh, 0.18 millimeters, whatever it was, it's really surprisingly tough stuff. Um, so yeah, let me just take all this stuff out and then I can show you what you actually do with it all. So there we go, that's the last bit. There you go, surprisingly easy. And yeah, and this uh, piece of frame, which keeps it all together. Again, it's just surprisingly tough stuff. Really cool. So first up, let's look at these pieces of shim material. Um, now, in some ways, they are uh, similar in concept to your standard padlock shims, or uh, if you want to make them ad hoc, your soda can shims. Uh, but these are made of a, like I said, a very tough steel material, and yeah, they, they, they do have a real rigidity about them. When I'm going to uh, use these, what I tend to do is I start to put a fold in the middle. I put my finger down and I, I start to fold in from the side like this to try and put a curve across the front. Um, that will actually, again, and do it the other side and, and you know try, try to get as much of a fold in the front of these as you can uh, if you're going to try to use them. Uh, you can't just put them in down the side of a, of a shackle as they are. They do need to be um, a little bit uh, curved first. 
So why do we have four different sizes of these? Uh, well, actually, a lot of older padlocks only used to have one locking pawl. What do I mean by that? Well, this lock, for example, has two, one locking this side of the shackle, one locking this side of the shackle. Uh, a lot of old locks only had one pawl. And by having four different depths, then uh, for those types of lock, you can choose the right depth of um, shim for your particular lock. For locks with uh, your two locking poles, then I tend to, with these, uh, put, pair up the larger ones like that and the smaller ones like this. And uh, the larger ones go for larger padlocks and the smaller ones for smaller padlocks. And it seems to work pretty well. So yeah, let me, let me just keep um, putting a bend in these, uh, just briefly like this, swap it over and try and do the other side. And it really, honestly, this really does help. Um, you could also uh, try to bend it around the shackle a bit if you want like that. And, it, and it, everything sort of helps with this. Um, once you've got um, a bend in your shims, then you can start to uh, just gently push them down into your padlock. Once we got the shim down the side of your padlock, then helps to just depress the shackle slightly and then turn the uh, the shim into where the pawl is. And again, that can take a little bit of while to do and we've got that in quite well. And you can see here what's happening is that you are pushing the pawl out of the notch on the shackle. You do the same on this side. Again, I normally start um, where there's a nice gap away from the pawl, squeeze um, this together around um, and then gently push down the shackle and try to just turn these in. And again, you've got to be careful because these can be quite sharp. They're not as sharp as you might think, but um, there is potential there to slip and hurt yourself if you're not careful. Then, of course, what you'll find is that if you've done it properly, you've pushed the poles out at either side of your lock and there you go, you can open it up. Now, interestingly, once you've used them once or twice, um, these become a load easier to use because they'll sort of keep a curve on them. Um, so they are somewhat difficult to use the first time, but they do get a bit easier as you go. That being said, those of you who are familiar with um, these types of pawl shims um, know that these plastic practice padlocks are actually quite easy to shim. So let's look at a couple of um, other locks that I've got, quite large ones as it happens, one of which is um, uh, a lock with um, I guess quite a lot of space down the shackle holes and one which is a little bit more precise um, and yeah you, you, there is a difference between the quality in lock brands as you well know. Um, let's see if I can get some of these shims down here and here. First up this large tricycle and again push down, turn in and hope for the best and then try to find a compatible size one. Let's go in the other size, again push it down, side of the chapel, turn in and this can be a bit tricky. You might have to just push down and wriggle and jiggle a bit. Um, or even, if it doesn't go in one way, do you know what you can do? You can just turn the whole thing round and follow the other side of the lock like this. So you might have to uh, see which way suits you best. Let's, uh, let's try and... Okay, almost there I think. Got it. So I think, I think, just push those shackle down a bit. I th think we might have those in, there we go, place and we've got an open. And um, let me show, show you these shims. They do take um, a little bit of a knock, but I think you'll agree they've held up pretty well, all things considered. And you'll also notice that they do take, like I said, a bit more of a curve, the more you use them, the more that you, um, uh, you know, twist them around inside the uh, lock around the shackle. So the more you use them, the more useful they become.
Next up, let's try something a bit more difficult, this cusp, and um, I'm going to use the two smallest um, shims. I'm just gonna pop one down this side. That's quite tight. As you can see by the lock, it's a bit tighter than the last one I did, and try to push that around. And then with the smaller one, see if I can get that in on the other side. Try to find where there's a nice big gap and try to push the tip down. There we go. Let's see if I can just wiggle that onto the pole. And I think, I think that might just about have it. Yeah, there we go. And oh, that is a tight fit in there, but you can still get it out. And again, you can see that these do take a little bit of a beating, but have held up, again, surprisingly well. I definitely think I'll get a few more uses out of that. And as you can see, they do take on a bit more of a curve the more that you use them, and the more that they're forced down into uh, the uh, down side of the shackle like this, of course, they will um, start to, to bend round to the shape of the shackle. And the more that you do that, the more uh, usable that they become. Next up, I want to show you this less obvious but incredibly useful little tool. And it does have some handcuffs on it. And yes, it can be used as a handcuff shim. Let me just show you what I mean. So um, here is a set of um, real ex-prison handcuffs. Now, I normally store them double locked because I have a house with children in and um, I don't want them to get into a point where they've overcompressed some handcuffs on themselves and because uh, they've been playing around and yeah, I mean, I just, I just don't want even to think about it. So for the purposes of this video, I have um, only put a, uh, a single lock on here so that it can ratchet around so I can, uh, a bit noisy, but there you go, I can put the, these handcuffs on. Now you can use um, this little tool to go down the side here like that. Um, so push it all the way down like that and then watch this clearly it won't work if it's been uh, double locked most um, handcuff shims won't uh, but it clearly works on what is one of I think the most uh, uh, secure handcuffs that uh, there, there was this has a, a you know leave lock mechanism it's made by Chubb and I, I, I just I don't know these handcuffs are just the best um, but yeah they work surprisingly well but that's not all Look, if only I had a small shim material to go inside the lock, lift up the locking mechanism and bypass it. Ah, oh, yep, it can be used. It's so thin, uh, 0.7 millimeters. Um, sorry, 7,000 of an inch, 0.18 millimeters. It's definitely, it's a fully locked. Look, I'm scramble it up. It's definitely thin enough to go down the side of uh, the wheels on these locks. And um, there you go, lift up the locking mechanism on the inside and bypass it. Very cool. And yes, because of that, it's also thin enough to go down the side of um, some other uh, dial combination padlocks. And I'll just use something to turn these dials instead of my fingers to save my fingers. And what you can do is you can just follow this around. And yeah, you can feel a groove on some numbers like that. Oh, it's, it's seven again. A little notch or groove there. I think the reason it keeps going over is because you can push um, the number forwards like that using the tip of this because there is a groove there to do so. So try that one. That seems to be on the six. Yep, I can push that forward, see? So it's six, seven, seven. Now, interesting, I can't feel anything on this one. And um, truth be told, there is actually two places on the wheel you can find a notch, but I know on this, if I start halfway, the first notches on this one are the right one. But anyway, we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Um, I just want to show you that you can feel the notches on these to decode them, and you turn it to two, like that, forwards. And then the only other thing you need to do is just, because uh, uh, I can't feel the notch on the final wheel, I don't know why, whether it's just this lock, there we go, you can decode it. So um, yeah, it's thin enough to do some decoding on um, locks and bypasses, as well as um, be a, a really decent handcuff shim too. Finally, we have these bits of shim material. Now, 
ideally, these would actually be thinner. Uh, these would be around four thousandths of an inch, um, which I think is something like 0 0.1 millimeters, something like that. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't have um, a card made of the same material with different thicknesses of that material on it, um, or at least not very easily. How are you supposed to use one of these? Well, uh, I, <laughs> weirdly, I don't have uh, any of them to show you exactly, but what you can do is for locks which aren't protected, you can use these as front shims. What do I mean by not protected? Well, a lot of locks, let me just take uh, one of these, you can see you can't put shim material down the side of these locks. It's not because they are um, uh, super high tolerance, it's because you can see there's a lip here and it stops you pushing shim material down the edge. Um, some locks though, and this is a very good example um, of one, actually do have no um, a notch or groove or anything on the inside to stop you putting shim material down. Now, these are actually quite hard to bend um, and get a bend on genuinely, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but like I said, it's, it's one of the compromises you have when you try to make a, a shim set out of all the same material. Hard would bend in, but you can start to, to do it by doing this. So you put it in to the lock. I do that. I do that. And then, yep, all of a sudden I've got a curve. And when I've got a curve, I can start to, well, I'll show you on this side, once I've got that curve, I can start to insert um, the shim all the way along the lock. Uh, what you can then do is you can then insert it along the top where the pins are. You can then uh, lift these pins up using a pick if you have one. And once they reach the right height, then you can advance the shim forwards until you get full control of the core. Uh, you don't have to think too much about the picking of it. Um, and as long as you just basically push the shim in, push the pins out of the way, and then you've got full control of the core and you don't really have to worry about um, trying to feel for the shear line or put tension on it or anything like that. You're, you're literally just um, pushing the pins up until you can advance the shim a bit further. So you just push the pin up. When it's at the right height, the shim will advance. Then you go in and you try and find the next pin. You just um, push it up and down till the shim advances and you just keep going down um, as you go. And it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper into the lock um, until you get to the end. So let me just see if I can do that. And I think the final pin now. Yep, all the way. Then of course, once you've done that, and I'll take out the vise so you can see, is, here we go, you can turn the core. And you get full control over it, complete control either way, which is kind of cool. Unfortunately, the kind of locks which will be able to take a shim this thick are, well, I guess thankfully few and far between, but nevertheless, they do work on the right lock. Albeit, I do wish that, um, like I said, these were made out of a slightly thinner material, but um, it is uh, the sort of compromise you might expect from one of these cards. So there you are, the Sparrows Lockpicks Shimmy card. I think if you went to their website um, in Canadian dollars, it's um, around uh, 20 Canadian dollars or thereabouts. Um, it's certainly uh, a novel and unique and um, has no problem slipping into um, a wallet, it's it's so sort of uh, thin and in, unobtrusive. Um, the pros of this are that it's super sort of lightweight, easy to carry. It comes um, sort of well protected with this uh, plastic coating and a, and a card if you need one to give it extra support. Um, the sort of handcuff shim slash bypass tool slash uh, decoding tool works really, really, really well and the shackle shims, um, whilst initially somewhat difficult to get into the shackles, are, again, really quite effective. Um, the only bit which isn't as effective as maybe I would have liked, but um, I think it's a compromise that I can uh, definitely understand, is these pieces of shim material. They are just that tiny, tiny bit too thick um, for a, a lot of locks. Uh, but there are definitely locks out there which these will prove quite effective on. So yeah, definitely a very cool 
uh, little thing to slip into a wallet. I don't know of any uh, other manufacturer who's even attempted to try to put, um, you know, uh, shims this thin and, and shackle shims and all that kind of stuff all onto a, a, a little card like this. I, I think that's uh, really innovative and, uh, you know, I really think that's awesome off Sparrow's lockpicks to, to take up this idea and develop it. Um, and I can't wait to see how in the future it carries on developing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I was involved in uh, the design of this, so it's hard for me to be uh, completely objective, but I do think I gave you quite a, a balanced view of it and uh, what, what I see as the pros and cons of it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give this video a like if you liked it. Do subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you all next time.